why you are taught history as mythology. That's what we're going to be talking about today, ladies and gentlemen of the winning team. We are still in this a uh, series that I'm doing about Noah and the flood and the this and the that and the other because I want you guys to know the truth and that's why we're here today and now we're going to talk about why you taught history as mythology. Now to give you guys a bit of a foundation eh, for any of you who haven't heard me share this sentiment before that I, re- I recognize now as somebody who has studied the Bible and who's, who's been pitching to you this whole time where I think a lot of these spiritual things come from and how it's from the Bible, what it is from the biblical perspective, historical perspective, this, that, and the other. And you guys know I'm very much a believer in the spirit. I invite in the things of the spiritual world. I invite the Holy Spirit before every single one of my videos. Right. And, and just in a lot of things that I do invite the Holy Spirit, because I believe that's the, that's the God in us that Jesus said he left. I know a lot of Christians today are struggling with that, which is stupid because again, that's what it says in the Bible. But anyways, um, and I believe in the things of the spirit, because again, the Bible says we wrestle not against f- flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities. Trust in the Lord your God with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him. He'll make straight your path. So what's affecting us, the root of what's affecting us is in, not in what we can see, but what is unseen. Just like how the wind and the waves, the waves are affected by the wind. The wind blows the waves. There's no point trying to tell the waves to stop. You need to tell the wind. And this is where we're going with all of this. So this is why I'm delving into all the things of the spiritual world in order to give you guys a bit of a backstory and to make sure that we can, when we're going forward, you guys will have something to look back to, to why I truly believe these things are real on all from all fronts, right? So history mythology so i was taught as a kid i've always been a very like you know mathematical person i've always been a very like problem solving i don't have time like i'm about to buy for the first time in my life a non uh uh uh, uh a fiction book for the first time like a fan uh, like i'm not somebody who buys who cares for anything that isn't actually real and ha- happening unless of course i'm just chilling with watching a movie but even those i've always believed since i was a kid that everything that you see on tv is real I've always believed that all of the movies will make it real because I don't believe that life imitates art. I believe art, art imitates life. And I believe everything that we see and we experience is because it came from somewhere. Somebody saw it, somebody experienced it and it's real. So I've always believed that these, those types of things are real. But I remember being in school and when we were like, when I was super young, I was probably like, how old was I? Because I can remember exactly sitting in class. I was probably about eight or nine. And I remember sitting in, in school. I think it was eight. I remember sort of seven. I remember sitting in class and they were like, so now we're going to do myths and fables. And then I tell you that I did not pay any attention. I was like, because I was thinking as well, I was already thinking this at like seven years old. I was thinking, dude, I can't even remember the things I want to remember. And you want me to now waste space in my brain with things that are not true. But I wish I didn't do that because now I'm having to learn all that in, in, in adult life, realizing that it's all real. And then I realized that's the point. That's exactly the point. Now, obviously not everybody's as extreme as me in terms of like, well, I'm just not going to learn any of it because I don't care if it ain't for real. If it ain't real, I don't want to know. But the idea is to indoctrinate us from very early on that here are the things that are real and here are the things that are not. And my simple question is who says that they are and who says that they are not? As a teacher, as an educator myself, right? One thing that bothered me in school in general always was who, like, who says like, cause I remember being in, 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 in school and this is again, something that's become more important. I think as the years have gone on than it was in the previous times, it would always be these questions. Like if you want to impress the examiner, if you want to impress the examiner, that's what people be saying to us. Like, if you want to impress the examiner, I'm like, I don't care about the examiner. I don't give a damn about the examiner. Who is the examiner? I don't care. Like, I don't care about the examiner. I care about getting an education. Right. And then I would think, so you want me to impress an examiner? Who cares about the examiner? Also, I'm writing, doing this from an exam board. Who made the exam board? And also, if I'm going to, and I'm going some of all of this, by the way, you're telling me I need to read this textbook, but I'm looking at the textbook and it's written by four or five people. Who are these people and what are their credentials to be there? I'm thinking, who are the credentials of the people doing the specifications? Who are these people's credentials? Who are the credentials of the examiner to be telling me to make that? So this is what I was thinking, right? As I was in, this is now when I was later in school, when I was like in my teenage years, I was doing my GCSEs, it was like 15, 16, you know, all those years. And where they're like, oh, you impressed the examiner. If you want to impress the examiner, I was like, who the hell is the examiner? Why do I care to impress them? Right. But this is what we do, right? We have these, these people, these, these decided viewpoints 
of a lot of different things and decided pieces of research and decided topics and whatever that are that are given to us that are drilled into us at school and we call that an education and we call knowing what you've been taught in the public education system having a good education so because i went and did a degree in in chemistry and the pure chemistry degree, I've, I've got a good education i'm well educated a lot of people say you're well educated although a lot of my education actually has been independent study i independent studied my whole life independent study all the time it's just something i love to do i'm just a, i'm just a scientist and mathematician at heart it's just what i do i study the, the bible like it's like it's a scientific paper like i i that's what i do right and i realized in hindsight that so much of the stuff that we are taught is just somebody's narrative right that is being projected to us in a way in which to get us to think a certain way so i'll give you guys a certain i'll give you guys a certain example like in my own job of things i are taught in the current curriculum that i'm a bit wobbly of because i discovered recently that um that you know this whole so if you want to study let's say um so so basically there's lots of different types of qualifications around the world right and in this country the difference between you doing a lot of the specifications here i'm going somewhere with this by the way guys of the mythology and you do doing studying that same subject somewhere else is there certain topics that they'll talk about here that they won't talk about in other countries because that they won't be for the international um um, um specifications because internationally those topics are a little bit taboo so for example talking about things like recycling Talking about recycling is a big thing to talk about in the Western world. We're quite happy to talk about recycling because we we want to you know feel better about ourselves and whatever. So there's a lot to do with recycling, and there's even modules and sections of the specification of what the kids have to learn about recycling. However, in other places of the world, the reason why when you do the international version of a lot of these qualifications that we have, say in places like the United Kingdom and so on and so forth, right? If you do the international version of these things, then what ends up happening instead, which is actually crazy. Is they're not included? We know why because that's going to be controversial when it's in some of the countries where we're just dumping things, or some of the countries where we're just that that are having to deal with the 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 aftermath or the 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 trash and whatever else that it is that we're producing over there. So it's going to be a bit tone deaf for us to be teaching about recycling over there. This is what I'm saying. It's all a big game, and it's all just a big ne- whose whose narrative is whose and what. And so let me ask you the question: Who has to gain? from mythology being seen as not real history who has to gain that's my simple question and i'm going to answer it and that's what this video is about the powers that be the people in power the people who you who are causing certain making decisions that are affecting your life negatively you know why because if if there are some powers if this spiritual world is a real thing and if there are ways that you can do supernatural things that can change the trajectory or the things inside of your life who is it going to benefit the most to have that and you think it doesn't it's not it doesn't exist it's the people in power because then they can utilize that for whatever it is that they want to do, whatever their selfish agenda is. And you just become a pawn in the game. You just become somebody that they have to indoctrinate and play like a little piece on a chessboard. That's exactly all they have to do at that point. They don't have to do anything further than that because that's how easy you've made it for them. Because all they have to tell you is, Oh, this is myths and legends. Meanwhile, they're the same people going and doing their seances and being in Bohemian Grove and doing all of these, whatever they're doing up there. And, you know, the, these 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 sacrifices that they do and these gods that they believe in and Beyonce showing her Oshun and representing this and that and all of these things that these people in power are doing. Right. And knowingly knowing that they are, have a power that they're telling you doesn't exist. Or it's got to the point where, and this is what is severely heinous in terms of the entertainment industry to me, is in the entertainment industry, they will have you literally, I can't believe I make videos like this on YouTube. Like it just hit me. Like I actually sit here and talk about stuff on YouTube and I actually upload it to the whole entire internet. That's insane. Anyway, these celebrities will sit there and they'll like be there saying to you like, oh um, yeah, so I, I'm a witch. Yeah, I worship the God of whatever. They'll tell you blatantly because you know why? Because they know, here's why. And this is the, this is the heinous part of it. They know that part of God is God's just judgment is that we have to be presented with all sides of the argument so that we get to choose. We have to be able to have two choices. That's why the devil can't just not hide everything. He has to also show his hand and do things blatantly because he, he has to be able to say at the end, well, they sh I showed them and they still didn't listen. I showed them and they still didn't wake up. That's his plan. 
So that's why when these celebrities say stuff, we're under these spells. We don't believe in these things. We've been told it's mythologies and fables and whatever, but it's actually history. It's actually telling us how we got to where we are and all the stuff I've been laying out in the last eight videos for you guys, all the way back to where all of this started in the very beginning of the Bible, literally, and the beginning of all of humanity right and they are um they are utilizing that against us they have to say it out loud so then when we go to heaven and on judgment day you're gonna say oh i didn't know that that such and such was 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 keeping me under the spell i didn't know that taylor swift was keeping me under the spell. it's like dude but these people said things out loud these people said that but you were under the spell because why because you were you were sold the narrative that these are myths and legends this is mythology not history right and then so what then happens in all of that is that these guys get away with it, right? And like I said to you guys, what, 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 whoever controls what you think controls what you do. That's why influence, influencing, influencers, celebrity, sports, all of that is so key and is the front line of the demonic force. The sports, entertainment, and media industries are the front lines, if you ask me, of this, the kingdom of the, de the devil. Because why? Because those are the things that you go to do when you've got your guard down. You go and watch Harry Potter and you think, oh, that's nothing real. You go and watch whatever, oh, that's nothing real. Everything you watch, oh, it's not real, right? It's all just make-believe. Disney, oh, it's just make-believe. It's all just make-believe. Right. So that's how it, you, you say we watch this for entertainment. We're forgetting that there's a word enter at the beginning there. And it's not entertainment to entertain you. It's entertainment to enter into you. Do you know what I'm saying? To get you to get these things that you're not going to believe even exist to just comfortably, calmly exist in your being and in your life without you noticing that they're there and blaming anything and everything else. That is the trick of the, the devil. The devil is the very, very best at creating division and creating issues and doing all these things. And then he's nowhere to be found, nowhere to be seen like a snake, right? Just like how snakes do it. A snake can bite you, right? And a snake will bite you. You may not even feel the bite. And let's say you do, it has the ability to have disappeared before you saw that it bit you and you saw it at all. So then when you get bit by this snake and now you're being poisoned, you're wondering where the poison, you're wondering what's going on in your body. You don't even know how to assess what's happening in your body because you've been bitten. You didn't know you were bitten. That's like what it's like with us. We bit, we've been bitten, but we don't know we've been bitten, right? And so we're just dealing with the aftermath, but we don't know the root cause of where these things are coming from. And then when we're being presented with the truth, like what I'm telling you guys now, we don't want to believe it because we've been told it's make-believe. Like I said, you've got your guard down. You're just relaxing. You're not taking it seriously. And that's the best time for the devil to strike because now your guards are down. You might be watching my video and your guards will be up. You'll be you critique. People critique every single thing that I'm saying. Even though I've got no reason to actually be even lying to you because I'm not going to benefit off of anything. <laughs> In fact, I'm, I'm shadow banned. I've been shadow banned for the entirety of the time I've been on YouTube. That's why I know when people subscribed, they were supposed to be here because I'm like, there's no way you got here by accident because YouTube is not trying to get people on my channel. That's for sure. Right. So, um, you know, but then you'll sit back and you'll intake all this stuff from the entertainment industry. You'll, you'll, you'll fall asleep listening to songs that are, that are, that are supposed to purposely be trying to, um, um, put spells on you in these musics. And there's people who come out, people, ex witches, ex warlocks, ex sorcerers, all these people come out and talk about how many of these songs and these things like this stupid, this stupid Meg the Stallion dance that everybody's doing, which apparently I, and I'm, I'm yet to look into it properly because there's just so much to have to look into, honestly. Um, this new dance that she did with that song that's gone viral is again, demonic, demonic song, demonic dance. They just get you to do all this stuff, right? Because those things are just entertainment. Those are just myths and mythology. Oh, you're not going to take that seriously. Oh, Zeus, oh, Hercules. Even though I was telling you guys that the same name given to Hercules, that name was, was it, there was her, oh, oh my gosh, actually, why am I wondering when I have the notes? I found it so Melkart, right? Which is one of the Phoenician gods, right? We talked about this when I was talking about Jezebel recently. Melkart, a Phoenician god known in Greek as Heracles, known in known as, to Romans, Hercules. They renamed them. All of these gods. If you go into it, this uh, the, the rap. Uh, we're going to keep jumping down this rabbit hole. By the way, I can only do so much so fast. So some of these things I'm introducing more. So some of these things I'm doing more in depth. But you get the gist of what I'm trying to say here. So we were at one moment. It's just oh myth the myth the mythology. But if you go back and you say oh, but Jezebel was actually worshiping to false gods, and oh worshiping to false gods is actually that, that was happening, and oh wait a minute these false gods actually had things and oh wait a minute the false gods that people were worshiping were actually the uh um the the spirits that were there around the times of noah and oh all of a sudden everything becomes very trackable very tangible and extremely observably happening yeah 
So that's why they teach you history, your history as mythology. Because what if you woke up? First of all, the main one of their concerns is that you're going to then take advantage of the same things they're doing, which a lot of people are. A lot of people are doing all witchcraft and stuff these days, and it works, right? A lot of people are doing it. There's witches everywhere. Like people are really going off these days, right? But the other thing they don't want is for you to find Christ. Because if you find Christ, that means you're going to find the one greatest power of all, which means that can take out any of the powers and every power. Because Christ is more powerful than every single power that ever existed on the planet ever to have ever existed. His name is greater than all of them put together. Because his power is infinite. You can't touch infinity. You know, like when you're a kid and you're like, I'm going to, I, something, something times infinity times five. Like he's infinity times infinity times infinity. He's infinity to the power of infinity. That's Jesus. Jesus has the power of infinity to, to the, infinity to the power of infinity. Whatever you think you have, whatever the world thinks it has. And so because of that, that is why the enemy is so hell bent on teaching us that all of this stuff is mythology. All of this stuff couldn't have happened. And I always think that we are so prideful as humans and actually foolish that we have this tendency where we will disregard large chunks of history, hundreds of years of civilizations and people that believed and did certain things. And we can see that these things existed, things that don't make sense, such like the pyramids is always a great example that everybody likes to use, right? But then what we'll say is, oh, we know better because there's no way that happened because it doesn't make sense to us. So because it doesn't make sense to us, it didn't happen. So because in the last couple, because it's only the last maybe, especially in the West, this is a much bigger West issue. I just like to say to those of you guys in the Western society, I want you to know that the rest of the world really knows about a lot of this stuff. The rest of the world is aware of the gods. A lot of the places in the world, they worship certain types of animals and they do. For example, I know that part of the religions in India, the reason why they don't, you don't, we won't really find beef in India is because they worship the cows. So people don't really eat beef in India. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that goes on around the world in certain types of worships. I know that in a lot of these East Asian countries, they have these temples and things where they do these processions and these rituals and these other things. I know in Africa, a lot of these tribal dances, a lot of these 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 attires and a lot of these things that they do, it's to worship false gods. I remember when I was working in London, there was literally a guy. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, a Caribbean guy actually and he ran this black African place where he he ran this like this this what does it call it pan-African like basically there was just a library with lots of African um like uh, uh books written by Africans with African language and a lot of culture by like it was that kind of place right and I remember there and then in that very building they had a shrine to Mami Water a deity they had a shrine and it was very uncomfortable for me to be in there. Me and my friend, when we first went there, we were both Christians and we were like, we need to pray over the place and we prayed over whatever for ourselves and everything. Right. People are doing sacrifices. I know that sacrificing is a part of even some weddings in Africa as well. These days, people in some part of the dowry, which you some of you who don't, who are not familiar with the customs in a lot of countries where like in certain weddings, you have to, you know, show, bring certain gifts, do certain kind of just gestures in order to like, you kind of receive the bride and ask the family for the, you know, all of that. In some countries they, they sacrifice animals and they don't think of it as a thing anymore because it's become so much of the demonic worship, especially in Africa is a big place. And I've said this, I believe this is why Africa struggles is because so much of this or so much of this demonic worship has just become culture and tradition. And, and, and I think that's actually part of why people get so angry in black communities about this stuff, because deep down, it's actually the demons themselves don't want to be stopped knowing that they're hiding under the guise of tradition. But this is why these things are happening. This is what I'm saying. So it's just in the Western world where People don't really believe in this stuff. And I always kind of laugh about it. No, I don't laugh about it because it's not funny, but like I kind of find it fascinating how people in the West, yes, you like shout out to the West. Well done for colonizing and doing everything you did. Like really good job, like really, really great stuff. The smart ones, like the L. Ron Hubbards, took all advantage of all of that to then manipulate everybody, which is what L. Ron Hubbard did, right? He's like, oh, we're Thetans. He saw what everyone was happening and he was consistently in his book, Dianetics, as you guys will know, we read through this on the channel, um, most of it. Um, he talks about how, you know, he likened, he, he critiqued all these different spiritual experiences that happen in other countries. And I believe he saw that and he's like, he did what a lot of people do in the West and said, well, we won't tell the people in the West how this works, but we'll use it against them. Right. Kind of thing. Yeah. That's what they did. That's what they do. A lot of these powers, they went and they saw stuff, these colonizers and these people, they went and they saw stuff. They went and they, they learned things 
and they brought things back. Some of the things are already here in certain countries as well, by the way. Like, for example, the Loch Ness in Scotland. Loch Ness um, is one of the deep, the deepest um, ocean. It's not oceans, locks in the world, deepest bodies of water in the world. As in, like, I can't remember how many hundred, hundred feet or whatever it is deep. So this Loch Ness monster, bruh, you know what I'm saying? And stuff like this, all these things. And they purposely don't tell you guys, the people that are in power, as I'm saying, it's very cute to go and do all of that and to like be looking down on other countries, but your same government's using the same the same tools that they learned from other places against you. That's the funny thing as well. Or that was already in existence, like I said, because some of it was already in existence. Some of it was taken, some of it was whatever. You see what I'm saying? And so I'm saying all of this just to say that like, let's be very careful. Like I've laid out in the last like however many videos, a lot of good points in the favor of why I do believe in the things of, of the spirit and why I do believe a lot of these myths are true stories. Like how things came to being, even I think it's the Japanese dynasty is believed to have come straight from, 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 from the gods, right? It, Rome was, was the, the, the Rome was founded because of the two brothers. There was two brothers. It was like Romus and Rem, Rembus. I can't remember that if you guys watch, I've got a video talking about, did I, did I do a video about the Roman empire? I don't think I did. I wouldn't do a video about the Roman empire because that's just too much of a, that's too much of a, of a, of a beast. I'm not, I'm not, I'm never going to probably do a video about that. That would take a lot because of how much people have to say about that. There's just virtually no way on earth I would make a video about that. But anyway, was founded, these two brothers, one of them killed the other one and then named it after himself Rome, right? And that was, they were like descendants of gods. All over the world, there's all these, these dynasties that started as descendants of gods, right? A lot of the dynasties today, you have the, the theories of the reptilians in Western society, like the modern royal family and such and like, and them being potentially di like, you know, a descendants of, 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 of these gods, of whatever, of these, these whatevers. So, you know, I'm not saying anything crazy. I'm saying things that are out there, but it's just that we told it as a myth, mythology. And I just find that really fascinating and really coincidental. I find it really coincidental that these powers that be seem to still do the exact things. Like we'll see people killing children. We'll see people doing sacrifices. We'll find out that they were doing all these exact rituals. And yet somehow we'll, that, that these people, these so-called mythologists, mythological characters were doing, and somehow we'll still at the end of the day come to the conclusion that those things were myths. Like, I don't really get it. Like, that's what I'm saying. I don't really understand because like, surely you're putting two and two together. The people of the past, the, these in these myths and legends, they were sacrificing kids. They were doing this. They were having this and that in order to instill all these demons. And then those of us today are doing the same. Those people today are doing the same thing. Uh, I wonder why. I'll leave you with that thought because there's so much more to come about all of this stuff. But that is why I believe that mythology is taught as history. They want to benefit off of them themselves. They don't want you to benefit. So they can use it against you and just use you as a pawn in their little game. Kill you when they need to. This is why they're always finding justified ways to need to bomb places and always inciting wars and things. So they need the life force, which is in the blood, right? And the more importantly, even than that is God forbid you find out about Jesus in their minds, right? Because if you find out about Jesus and you find out that he's the most powerful force of all, you realize that you won't fear anything in anyone on this planet because you've got the most powerful force, the most powerful name in all the world, in all of eternity and humanity on your side that can has the power to destroy anything and everything because Jesus' power is infinity to the power of infinity. And on that note, you guys, I hope you've enjoyed this. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below and don't forget to check out the rest of this whole playlist, which is a very long playlist this time. Um, on the stuff of Noah and the first video with the intro and the other videos, listen, it's all in there. There's just so much stuff to cover, so much stuff we're covering, and I'm not even done yet. So I hope you guys are enjoying this because if life's a game, it's pay to win. God bless you all. God loves you. I love you. And I'll see you in my next one.